Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is the Sega Mega Drive 2 or Genesis 2 to my American friends that I repaired in a previous video. You may remember I also modded the Scott lead to output C-Sync and as you can see uh, it's still working perfectly fine. Now you may have seen a PCB on the Mega Drive here. This is one of my switchless region boards and that's what I want to do today is install one of my switchless region mods into this. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. What I want to do is strip down the case because it's a little bit dirty. You can see there's all dust bunnies in there, and uh, but there's some pubes in there as well from the 90s. <laughs> but yeah, I need to strip the bottom and the top case down. Super easy to do the bottom case first. I'm just going to remove the cartridge reinforcement, cartridge slot reinforcement. Don't lose this, guys. Uh, if you lose this and you screw the Mega Drive back together because this is not reinforcing the cartridge slot you can end up with dry joints and then when you end up with dry joints on the cartridge slot guess what your games don't work anymore so I'm going to remove that super easy just pull it out the shield is super easy to remove as well pull that out and that's it that's the bottom half of the Mega Drive stripped down what you can do is you can take the expansion port door off as well if you want to there's no point guys i just leave it on there but if you want to do that you can do that what i'm going to do now is strip down the top half of the case okay let's strip down the top shell so these are very easy to come out the buttons this is the power button just clip together push poke done <laughs> same again with the reset push together again push this one you can grab it and pull it out like that and this one's a little bit more tricky this is the light pipe for the power indicator and that's that we might as well keep clean the cartridge flat doors as well so let's take the cartridge doors off the top shell ready to be clean put that down there get out all the screws and very easy to get off guys all you do is take your finger like this push there you go it's one out again push two out next thing you need to remove is the springs it's one and the last one two and that's it, we're all stripped down, ready for cleaning. As you can see, I've got the cartridge slot doors and the cartridge slot housing, the top of the case and the bottom of the case soaking in the bath. And I've got the other parts, the switches, the power reset and the light pipe in that little cup just there, what I'll do is I'll let these soak for half an hour, come back, give them a scrub, and they should be looking really nice. I pretty much got everything ready to switch this region mod. This console just needs to do a little bit of prep work. So I'm gonna do a magic trick, three, two, one. And there we go. 
all prepped, ready to go. So let's get installing this into the Mega Drive 2. Now the first thing I need to tell the Switchless Region Mod Board is whether the Mega Drive has a high reset or a low reset. Now the Mega Drive 2 has a low reset so all I have to do is bridge these two bottom pads just here. If it was a high reset I'd bridge the upper two. I just need to bridge the lower two so I'm just going to come in and bridge those two together and that's told the switchless region mod that the Mega Drive 2 is a low reset. Now you can probably hear in the background I've got my desoldering station going. The reason for that is I need to suck off Diggity. this old power LED. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to flip the board around. Hold it there so you can see it. Take my desoldering gun. There's one. Two. I flip the board over should be able to get that out now and there we go that's the old power indicator LED removed now the next thing I need to do is cut some traces and I'm going to use my craft knife now this is very delicate guys you need to be very careful when you're doing this bit so I'm going to try and be as careful as I can and I might block the camera while I'm doing this, so I apologise in advance if I do. So the first one I need to do is the reset button. very delicate okay that's the reset button cut what I need to do now is the language and the language trace I'm gonna have to turn the board completely round the benefits of being left-handed guys <laughs> So here's the language just here, I'm going to cut that trace and again I apologise if I get in the way but I've got to be really delicate because I don't want to cut the traces that are around there. So I'm just going to come in, be really delicate because I don't want to nick that trace that's above it. I think that's got it. So that's the language trace cut. And the final one to cut is the video, which is basically 50, 60 hertz. So I'm going to come along and I'm going to cut that one. This one's a little easier, there's no traces around it, so it should be a little easier. Again, I'm just going to come in and just cut across it like that. I'm not pushing any, I'm not doing this with the knife guys, I'm basically pushing with my thumb. I'm pushing down with this hand and I'm pushing with my thumb. Um, because that way, when you do it that way you don't slip. So I'll just come along and do that again just to make sure. And that's the blade just snapped. It doesn't matter, it's still sharp enough. It's a good thing about these craft knife blades. If, you, if the end does come off, you still got the rest of the blade. See what I'm doing now is just digging the rest of the track out that I've cut away. What I'm doing, I'm not 
digging in, all I'm doing is I'm just pushing it there and I'm just flicking it like that and that'll get rid and there we go and that's that trace cut as well so that's all our traces cut what I need to do now is expose some solder masks on some of the traces I've cut the reason for that is because we're going to solder to them now what I've done is I've gone and got a blunt blade this is a blunt blade I've used it many times and it's blunt I'm going to use that to scrape away the solder mask so again I apologize in advance if my hand gets in the way but like I said this is a little bit tricky and I'll see if I can do it so I'm just going to come in see if I can scrape away trying to do is not scrape away the trace next to it because I don't want to create a bridge okay so that one looks like it's okay and done let's scrape away the solder mask now this one's a tricky one guys because there's a lot of vias there and there's also a lot of traces you can see so this one's a really tricky one so you've just got to take your time And there we go, I think we got enough of that trace. And the final one I need to do is the video. So I'm just going to come along and do exactly the same as I did with the other two. Now this one's a little bit easier not really anything around there apart from that resistor that's above it but we're not going to touch that and that looks good enough for me just a little bit more by the bottom and there we go that's the video one done what I can do now is tin those exposed traces first I'm gonna come along with a little bit of alcohol on a q-tip because I just want to make sure there's no contaminants there Just clean those off. That should be good enough. So nice and clean. And do now. So I'm just going to come along, put a tiny bit of flux on each trace. 
just to help with the tinning. There we go. So now I'm going to get my soldering iron, and because it's flux on the trace, I'm just going to load up my soldering iron, and I should just have to touch it. And there we go, it is one tinned, very easy. That's the reset switch. Let's do the language. And there we go, that's the language done. And now all we have to do is the video. So I'll come along, turn it this way so I can see better. Just gonna put a little bit more on. Just touch that and there we go that's the video done and that's the prep work finished it's going to do a little bit of cleaning up now because obviously there's flux on there and I don't want it there so I'll clean it off now but I'll cut all on a q-tip and I'm just going to clean off those exposed traces that have now been tinned and that's it we're now ready to install the switchless region mod What I want to do now is show you where I like to put the switchless region mod board. Now I like to put it on top of the custom Sega chip. Now there's many ways you can do it. You can use hot snot, hot glue basically. But what I do is I get a bit of electrical tape and I just stick it on top of the custom Sega chip like this. Then what I do is I get a little drop of super glue just there and there like that and then what I can do is I can take switchless region board and I can just secure it on top of the custom Sega chip and if I ever want to get it off I can just peel it off because it will come off with that electrical tape super easy let's get installing this sucker <laughs> so first thing I want to do is install the LED the region changing LED so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in and take a little bit of super glue just where I put the heat shrink and you need to get this right guys you need to match it in the same place as the old LED, thankfully Sega put a circle there so you know exactly where to put it so I'm just going to leave that there for a few seconds and let that set and then I'll come back and solder the wires region indicator LED is glued in let's solder in those wires, super easy so we'll come with a red one red installed then we'll go with the ground it's the ground installed and then we'll come with the green and then that's the green installed just check them make sure they're connected yep they all are winner winner that's the region indicator LED installed next is a button and reset so let's get those wired in. 
I'm going to turn it round because again I'm left handed <laughs> and it can be a real pain in the backside sometimes being left handed but them's the perks as they say <laughs> soldering button Just make that nice and neater don't like that joint so what I'm going to do so I'm just going to come along put a little bit of no clean flux on there hopefully it tidies the, the joint up quick torch in there you go look at that power of flux everyone <laughs> okay so that's button I'll turn that around there like that there we go and we're going to get reset put in again left handedness it's a pain <laughs> ok let's get reset in there put some solder on my soldering iron come on and I'm going to hold that in place just there and I'm just going to tack it on there and there we go you can see that's on there pretty nice and all I have to do now is flip this over like that just give that a twist neaten that up a little bit there there we go and we're going to solder in the button first there's the button and here's reset and there we go that's button and reset soldered in tidy that up there we go next is language and video so I'm just going to come in I'm going to go underneath these two this makes things a lot easier again left handed problems <laughs> Gonna bend that like that. There we go. So I'm gonna take my soldering iron, I'm gonna place it over the trace and I'm just gonna touch it. test little wiggle don't want to put it too much and that's on there and I'm going to come along and do the same now with the video and just going to grab it there like that okay, and I'm just going to touch it give it a little wiggle test and it's on there and I'm going to solder the video to the switchless board and that's the video wire installed I'm going to solder this to 10, just there like that, that's 
video and language taken care of and finally it's power and ground so I'm just going to prep this resistor just here this is plus 5 and this is my ground just here just prep those two points then spend that wire a little bit like that more soldering it's 5 volts do the same with this wire bend it a little like that and this is where I burn my fingers <laughs> in fact I'll use my tweezers and this ground and just wire it I'll switch this board and start with the 5 volts first. And it's 5 volts. And finally, ground. Push that down, neaten it up. And that's it switch this region mod installed so let's give this a quick test just to make sure it's all working before I put the lid back on I've got power I've got score input I've got a game and I've got a controller so let's power on and green is PAL region and you can tell it's PAL because I've got the borders now let's check the language, so if we go to Streets of Rage the menu, title menu should be still Streets of Rage, so I'm just going to skip that and there we go come on focus, there you go, Streets of Rage so we know the PAL region is working, let's change it to let's focus again, come on what's the matter with this camera there we go, focus, I'm going to change the region again and we're going to go orange and that's US and you can tell we're in the US region now because I'm getting shimmering and the borders are gone and that's because obviously there's a mismatch between what I'm filming I'm filming in 50 Hertz and the TV's now at 60 Hertz so there's a mismatch and that's why you've seen that shimmering now the language should still be the same because obviously US is English well predominantly English so it sh should still be uh, streets of rage skip that and there you go streets of rage so we know the US region is working uh, let's change to the Japanese region which is red let go and now we should be in Japanese again I've got the flicker in and we've lost the border so we know we're getting 60 Hertz let's go to streets of rage now what we should see now is the title screen be bare knuckle because that's the japanese name for streets of rage so again and there we go bare knuckle so the japanese region's working as well so yeah that's a successful switchless region mod install what i'm going to do now is put the console back together and i can wrap up the video and as you can see we're all back together and it's come out not looking too bad I'll show you something if you go and check the video back you would have seen like a, a little white mark just here um, now it looked like crayon um, I don't think it was crayon but it, it looked like crayon and it wouldn't come off uh, when I washed it so what I did was get a, a a magic eraser on it and it came straight off um, now sadly there are a few dings on this mega drive I can't do anything about uh, there's one just here that goes through the 16 
in the 16-bit logo. Uh, there's a little one here that you may see. Uh, doesn't go into the Mega Drive 2 logo, which is a, a bonus. Um, but there's one really bad scratch here uh, that I can't do anything about. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's not too bad looking, guys. Um, I've dated worse. <laughs> <laughs> okay let's power this thing on and as you can see it's orange so I've set this for the US region and there's Sonic 2 so yeah hope you liked the video guys if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one. Winner, winner. Switch this reading. Modded Mega Drive 2. Sweet. Catch you next time, guys.